Hi, and welcome to this course on scientific figure preparation in Adobe Illustrator and Fiji. My name is Sarah Smith, and I'm a scientist in the microscopy, imaging, and big data team at the Stowers Institute. Um, this course is specifically focused on figure preparation. So we're not going to be drawing cartoons or um, sh shapes or anything like that. There are classes that are focused on that that are really good. Um, Mark Miller has one at the Stowers Institute, so if you want to learn more about um, illustration in Illustrator, then uh, inquire with Mark. This class is specifically focused on laying out data in the scientific figures. So we're going to be aligning, we're going to be um, managing our text, things like that. And we're going to be trying to do it in the most efficient way possible so you're not frustrated clicking um, and getting lost. Okay, with that, let's get started. So you probably have a journal in mind that you want to aim for when you're putting your paper together. If you don't, you can just sort of set it up in a generic way, but if you do, it's a good idea to go for, uh, to check what that journal expects in terms of figure preparation and layout. And so most journals have some guidelines on what they want. Um, this one is the one from Science, and it says the sizes, it says the dots per inch, it says um, what kind of fonts that it's interested in. And so each journal usually has something like this, and they have some similarities, a lot of similarities, but some differences. So I've put together a table of four journals that you might be interested in publishing in. So this is Cell, Science, Nature, and JCB. Um, so the cell journals have similar requirements, uh, and etc. So the first four of these categories, figure width, height, color format, and PPI, or also called DPI, are the things that we'll be most interested in when we're setting up our page, just to get started. So width and height are um, the just the size of the page. Um, cell and science give widths, but they don't give, give heights necessarily, and if, if you're running down to the edge of the bottom, you, you might inquire about that. Uh, Nature and JCB do give the height of the page. Um, all four of them require that the format for color be RGB. RGB, as opposed to CMYK, is better for screens, and since we primarily look at journals through screens now, um, RGB is preferred. Uh, finally, um, PPI or DPI is basically the res resolution of your images that it, that's going to be required in your final document, and um, they all require 300, which is a high resolution. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and open Illustrator. We're going to open Creative Cloud first. I'm already logged in to my um, Adobe account, and I'm going to open Illustrator. It takes a minute to open. Okay, so the first screen that comes up is our, our new um, page w window. So we're going to Create New. And this is where we have a chance to enter all that information from the table. So I'm going to go for a nature paper. I think I'm going to submit to nature. So I'm going to um, use 183 millimeters across, 247 up and down, RGB format, 300 PPI. OK. So I'm going to switch to millimeters. 183, 247, then click on advanced options, then we want to switch to RGB, and then 300 ppi is already set. So we'll hit create, and our new page will open in a second. All right, so we have a new page. Yay! Now we're ready to start our figure prep, but there's one more thing we have to do, which is we have to set up Illustrator so that it's useful for us when we're doing um, scientific figure preparation. Illustrator's main purpose is actually as a for illustration, so design, making logos, things like that. It's also great for scientific figure prep, but we need to 
do a little bit of rearrangement. So I like to first um, hit this little two arrows to minimize these windows so I have them all in a list right here. That way I have more room in my image window. Then um, we're going to add more tools to this side and we're going to do that by finding each one under um, window. So I'm going to hit window then the first one that I want is swatches. So they're in alphabetical order. I'll click swatches. These are all my colors I'm going to be dealing with later. And then I also want attributes. So window attributes. And that's going to be where I specify my fill and stroke if I want to specify that ahead of time. Um, next we're going to add some, we're going to be having some text on this page on, in our figure. So we need to go under type and there are three things we need to type. Character, character styles, and glyphs. So I'm going to grab each one of those. Character, forget all the rest of this stuff. Character styles, and glyphs. Glyphs says all of our um, special characters, delta, micro, that kind of thing. All right, and then finally we want our align and um, distribute and our transform. So I'm going to go up to align. And that came down here for some reason. And um, so we have both align and transform here. So I'm I'm going to just move those two over here. And you see how I can either move them together so they're in one group with a little vertical line area in between the next group or they're apart. So I, I just set them into groups so that swatches and attributes were together, my text words together and align and transform were together. So these are all the things that I need for doing my figure preparation. So I'm going to, uh, now I'm going to save this as a, its own workspace. And so I'll clip, click at the top where it's, you'll see it says essentials right now. We're going to switch that and we're going to say new workspace. We're going to call our new workspace figure prep. And that way, if it gets messed up, if we lose a menu, we can, so if I get rid of this, I can come down here, I can click reset figure prep and it'll come back. Everything will be nice. So the last thing we need to talk about in this getting started portion is record keeping. So I'm not going to show my record keeping during this tutorial, but it's really important because everybody does it differently, but it's really important to keep track of where you're getting the data from that you're putting into your figure because you have a responsibility to be able to produce that data if someone asks for it, um, if, if somebody challenges your work, uh, if somebody, you know, wants to check it out. So you need to keep track of it. And at the Star Wars Institute, we also have a responsibility to put, put our data so it's publicly available in the original data repository. So keep track of where all your data is coming from, um, which, which image from which day goes with which figure panel, um, and the related notes from your lab notebook for that. So remember to be careful, keep track of what you're doing, make sure any uh, edits that you make to your image, like if you did a Gaussian blur or something like that, that you have that written down and it makes it into the figure legend. But now that we have our nice blank page and we have our menus all set up and we have our data nice and organized, we're ready to actually put data into our figure. And we'll start doing that with part two, um, image data. We'll look at microscopy data and Fiji. Um, so I'll see you then.